Thriving in today's fast-paced world of change and disruption requires innovation. Inside Outside Innovation is the podcast that explores the ins and outs of innovation with raw stories, real insights, and practical advice from the best and brightest in the world of startups and innovation. Each week, we'll bring you the latest ideas in lean startup, design thinking, corporate venture capital, and more. Now, let's get started. All right, we're back with another episode of Inside Outside Innovation. Excited to go back to an interview that we actually conducted back at the Lean Enterprise Summit in New York City a few months back. Uh, at that time, we had the opportunity to interview Amy Mungo, uh, Senior Product Manager with Capital One. And what I like about the interview you're about to hear is Amy is coming from uh, a lot of startup experience and it provides some very real and raw uh, look into what it's like to come from a startup and jump into a corporate innovation team. And so I uh, hope that you will uh, take away some of the great uh, things that she talks about in terms of uh, how important having a great leader is, um, some of the ways that uh, you, you try to take what you learn, especially around leading startup and apply that to a corporation. So hope you enjoy this episode and let's get into the interview. start off, uh, just tell me who you are and what you're doing and how you got involved in, in uh, innovation. Sure. Um, so I'm Amy Mungo. I'm currently um, a product lead at Capital One in, in the um, brand and credit card business. And um, I've been at Capital One for 18 months, which is relatively new there. Um, but I am a constantly evolving um, startup person, uh, entrepreneur. I've been part of seven or eight startups. A couple were my own. A couple I still hold stock from from decades ago, which kind of ages me out a little fast. Um, but I, I just have kind of like that, that startup mentality uh, <clears throat> and the energy to constantly be pursuing new things on behalf of better human-centered design experiences. i um, always been human-facing, uh, customer experience-facing. So before we had all these like great fancy books where people made a lot of money on those books, I, we were kind of doing it. And I have a lot of pride in all the teams I've worked with over the years on that. Fantastic. So we're at the Lean Startup Labs, uh, the new summit series that they're having. And this one's specifically focused on corporate innovation. And so we want to sit down and talk to you a little bit about what's it like uh, at Capital One to take some of this Lean Startup principles and how are you applying it in, you know, in a different environment than a startup? Oh, sure. Um, so... I think it's fair to say that we're still applying it in pockets around Capital One. And we do have a lot of autonomy and flexibility that way. So if we want to try different methodologies, uh, we're, we're empowered to do that. Um, so we're, we're using facets of lean startup or uh, rapid iteration cycles. Um, that's one of the ways I've been able to introduce it in a way that people kind of can, can, can latch on to and be excited, especially when we're with our design partners such as Scott and his teams. That makes great sense for learning about customers, but just, just not learning and saying, oh, well, that's, that's over. It's about learning and be like, well, what's next? Where's our next improvement lie? Um, can we get to beta with this? What is our, what is our thin slice? To, to see how customers in the wild. We were talking about banking customers, right? So we're talking about money, and we can test all we want. We get great testing insight, don't get me wrong. Um, but until we make that money theirs, we don't know exactly what we're after because money is very personal. Um, so that, that's kind of like how we're doing it now. I would say um, we definitely have our labs teams around Capital One, uh, which are definitely more progressive. Um, they were built that way. We are within a line of business, so we are evolving. But I, I, would, I feel very comfortable saying we're evolving at a rapid rate with a lot of enthusiasm and interest and collaboration along the way. Were there particular champions in the, in the business that said, hey, let me put my head above the fray here and, and might get it chopped off, but let's, let's give it a try? Or how did that actually work? You know, I think we're lucky. So I think we have an amazing CEO. Uh, Richard Fairbanks has said we're going to become a technology company. And to do that requires X, Y, and Z. And it requires another whole vernacular of X, Y, and Z that we don't know about. We know that we have tons of customers. We have millions of customers. And we have even more data on those customers. So let's all use that data, those experiences, the technology, and, and change banking for good. That's something we all truly believe in that we're doing, where you're changing banking for good for the, the, the betterment of our customers. But he has given us that, that right to become a technology company. And then so we started off with labs, but we've been hiring people from the outside too. So we're this beautiful like, kind of 
uh, we have these cross-functional teams of people that are brilliant analysts that know our business inside and out, and they're teaching some of us that are newer there and that may come from different entrepreneurial backgrounds how to work in those environments, and we're teaching those, them the methodologies that allow us to stay enthusiastic and champion c customer experiences at a faster rate, too. And we're on an evolution, too. We're, we're leaving Waterfall um, to an agile environment. In the card business, our tech is now 100% agile. So we have all these things influencing us at the same time. And I would guarantee that answer varies um, depending on who you ask. But having your leader say, nope, this is who we're going to become. And I'm going to empower people to go out and help me figure that out. What that means is, is kind of a gift. Yeah. So what are the, some of the biggest things you've learned in the, in the, Amy, the first 18 months you've been there? And, and how has the transition been from an entrepreneur to taking some of these startup things and, again, applying into a, a massive corporation? Sure. So I would say, um, very honestly, I'm still in transition, as is the company, right? Um, so things I have learned or things that I had to relearn. There was once a time I was in big cor corporations about nine, ten years ago. Um, things move slower. And that isn't always a bad thing. Right? especially when we're talking about highly regulated industries and people's money. Uh, it, it, it's about getting comfortable with that pace, but also being comfortable pushing that pace a little bit. Um, so you know, you heard me earlier, you know, I, I talk about being comfortable with knowing where your product is and being willing to pivot that or abandon it altogether. Um, so that's part of the influence that people like me are bringing forward. And I, I don't always want to talk about abandoning or killing things. I just think it's, it's important for innovation because that gives us the opportunity to make a clean break and take only the stuff we want to, we want to move forward, the learnings, um, back into the next innovation. Um, but definitely just the rate at which things um, get done. And then also because we have um, an accountable executive model, um, you need to make sure that, that there's consensus at some levels and painting the right picture so our accountable executives can make decisions efficiently um, without having to be in the weeds like we are with product teams, right? So being able to communicate up and across the organization is, is very important. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm relearning that again. And it's, it's fascinating from just a human dynamics study. So I'm, I'm geeky enough to be fascinated by that. So how much do you think the challenges of implementing lean or implementing some of these faster moving startup principles is political or, or talent driven versus other factors that kind of hinder or hold back the, the process? Oh, wow. Another great um, question. So we were tasked with becoming agile everywhere. So the team that I sit on within the digital transformation group, the other half of our, my, my collective team is the agile everywhere team for uh, the branded card business. So, it's not an option. We will get there. Now, our technology teams across cards, so they report up through a different accountable executive, they are 100% agile. Mm -hmm. So you kind of see modeling going on. Mm -hmm. And then I think the different lines of business leaders, and I, I'm kind of projecting now because I'm not in those meetings, they say, yes, we are going to be agile everywhere. Or actually, we are beginning, we're bringing in lean UX training. Um, Jeff Godolf, who, you know, who does it, he's actually coming in and he's doing some uh, work with some of our teams. Um, in market teams, and, and we're going to be trained in real time and see if that takes. So there's a lot of tolerance for experimentation. I bring a lot of lean startup methodology, a lot of test and learn, iterative cycles, and my bosses said, hey, let's try it. Um, but we're, we're going to continue to have honest conversations throughout that journey, which I think is great for a company as big as ours. So changing topics a little bit. So obviously uh, internal training and, and uh, internal uh, uh, innovation yourself, kind of building your own products and that using these kind of methodologies. How, how else has Capital One kind of approached uh, engaging with startups? We were just talking about that this morning <laughs> on our walk here. So we have um, teams that are charged with going out and being market-facing and seeing what's going on in startup communities mm -hmm. and what people we want to partner with acquire, um, do things. But then you have you know, everyday people like myself who have their own network and I'm going out, I'm doing some totally early stage rogue research right now about what's going on in like second and third tier environments and how we can pull insights forward. And that's not threatening to the startup, nor Capital One. And it's very fluid and very encouraged. So we're doing that on, on multiple levels. I mean, I wish I, 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 wish I had somebody from the, that, that sort of um, startup seeking team here because they would have a, a pithier answer for you. But just uh, that we're doing it with great enthusiasm and great transparency across the marketplace, which is kind of exciting. So the last question we typically ask is, uh, what can our audience do for you? All right. So I'm a human advocate, and I come, I, I, I've gone in and out of corporate and, and startups. Never lose sight of who you really are. 
right? I happen to have landed in a corporate environment that wanted to hire entrepreneurs to bring our drive, um, or I'm an explorer from the last talk with Ken, that sort of mentality um, into, the, into the organization. And I have felt very little hindrance in that. I've had to have different conversations and sell people on like, hey, why I matter too. But I've never, in my 20 years of working in, in five different cities, I've never lost sight of who I am. And I think that authenticity plays through into your work. If you're a tried and true designer, if you're a tried and true analyst, if you're a tried and true explorer, be that person, but allow the different skill sets to become part of you, but never lose sight of who you are. Awesome. Amy, thanks very much for being on Inside Outside. Look forward to uh, continuing the conversation. Absolutely. Thanks. That was fun. Well, that's it for another episode of Inside Outside Innovation. Special thanks to our guests for being on the show this week. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so please do reach out and uh, talk to us on Twitter at the IO Podcast. Uh, visit us online at, at uh, insideoutside.io. And uh, if you have 30 seconds, go over to iTunes, uh, leave a review, and you can subscribe there as well. We'd love to hear from you, and until next time, go out and innovate.